Zoom, zoom. Oh, I still have those noises. I hear zoom, zoom, zooms in my head. They keep calling me. They counsel me. They understand. Understand. Zoom, zooms. They understand. Oh, wait. I apologize for that, folks. That's my terrible singing. I am the one. The only. Hobo Tom. I'm, I'm here to give you your kind of Friday wrestling recap. I know this video is coming up late. I was at work all day. And I had to get to sleep. I had to be at work all day. You know it's a wrestling program? Because, well, I'm wearing my wrestling t-shirt. Just like any good wrestling fan should. So I'm here to talk about some SmackDown. And 205 Live. So, yep. If I look a little bit different, it's because I've been outside, for the most part, exposed to the elements all day long. So it's good because I got paid for it. Uh, so let's start off with SmackDown. Uh, we have a Miz TV. Again, you have Miz and John Morrison. How amazing is John Morrison? Uh, they do a promo together. The New Day shows up. They're going to be battling it out. And I have no idea if I'm going to be able to watch it. But it's Super Showdown, the 27th. Let's see here. I'm going to mark that on. I'm going to mark that on my calendar. Just in case. Super Showdown. Even though I still can't live stream for a little bit longer. Oh. Uh, I'll do that in the second part. That's okay. And also, we started our first match with... The Glorious! I will defend until the end, until I'm, de until I'm victorious. I almost forgot a song there for a second. And Dolph Ziggler taking on the Ooh Souls. That was pretty cool. Uh, whoa! This was a pretty fun match. Um, that shove off the top rope by Ro by Robert Root onto Jimmy Uso. I can never tell which one's which. And to the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the table. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Again, the Usos eventually did make their comeback during the commercial. And because Tamiya was kind of off the air, there was a backup. All the truth, you could backup. To watch my pro wrestling. I uh, did not have the picture in the picture, but instead they always play cool videos like Chugga. Yeah. Oh, nothing, man. And what was the other cool video they played? They played the Butthole Surfers. It's been a while since I've seen the Butthole Surfers. Someone was in my room last night. Who the hell was in my bed? Wait a second. Hope I was and just me, indeed. Uh, but with that, you know, it's always cool to see the Usos do make their comeback during the commercial. Then there's a Samoan drop to both Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. The zigzag I've learned is no longer a finisher because Ziggler hit that on Jay Uso. Did not have the desired effect. I thought my cat was there. She might have snuck up. That's okay. I have to start cooking dinner soon. Uh, so the Usos made their comeback again. Then there was a one person super kick party. It's awesome. The splash, but Robert Root is a very smart wrestler. And I'm sorry, Dolph Ziggler is a smart wrestler. He knows what happens when wrestlers go up top. And generally, they kind of fall down. And he got his knees up. He tried to go for a quick roll-up. But no. But then there was the, the Highland Splash. By Jimmy Uso. That sealed the deal, folks. The Usos defeat Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. And we'll see what happens to the storyline in the future. But I'll tell you what. That was fun. That hit. I clicked all the boxes. That was a good... Surf and turf match. Uh, 
And let's hear this. Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross promo. I want that sex tape. I want that sex tape now! Because you know those two canoodle back there. They share more than a cup of coffee. Uh, then there was a recap of the loser dog food smash. Uh, Corbin gets upset. He tossed down some stage production guy or whatever. Then there's Face Elias. Brum, who's actually really good on the guitar. Like, you know, I think one song on the guitar. I can do the basic strumming to Nirvana's Plateau. Very simple stuff. That's about as complex as I can go. That was a probably pretty piss poor imitation too. And I'll have some shout outs to give later, which is a lot better. And I have to, unfortunately, there's some bad news too that to kind of pass along to everyone. So I'm going to actually do that as well. Well, I talk about Elias sticking on Cesaro. Sami Zayn comes down. See, Elias, that's what it's like to get interrupted all the time. Again, he does like to interrupt people for whatever reason. Uh, actually, it was a class, classic wrestling match for really the whole beginning of it. Um, it's very hard to critique an Elias Cesaro match because, it's, again, it's, it's a really old school classic match. And it's pretty hard to say anything bad about it. There, Sammy gets on the ring again. He always, as he's known to do, And it makes some interference, but this referee is not smart enough to actually kick him off. So that only happens only every so often. Let's see, I'll put one more. Whoa, that's right, he was on the That's a good one. Then again, Elias, again, he got sent head first into the post. Ouch. Again, remember the post really is the hardest part of the, is probably one of the hardest parts of the ring besides the steps. Yeah, the post probably so the post is the second hardest part. I think I've already identified the third hardest part is the turnbuckle bolts, and then there's the barricade, and then there's the ring apron. So yeah. He had the second hardest part of the ring, the ring post itself. There, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm all set up for future stuff or a little break. Again, again, there was a uh, no suplex, no superplex versus R. You couldn't get Elias up, he's too big. He does do that pop up uppercut, and then sometime, I think when I was getting my second glass of wine, because it was a red wine pizza Friday, as you can tell by the thumbnail. Uh, Elias dropped the elbow drop, made yep, the macho man proud. The macho man proud. And face Elias wins in a cheeseburger match. Uh, Corbin eventually makes his way out to the ring. Again, he, he, he does the classic heel thing by making fun of that team's sports teams. Yeah, guess what? Your 49ers lost to my Kansas City Chiefs. Suck, suck that egg. And then there's some plant in the obvious, a very obvious plant in the audience. He gets his drink poured on his head. Oh, that plant. And then Roman Reigns comes out, Superman punch. And he accepts, and this sets up a steel cage match. For Super Showdown! Again, I'll probably... Oh, I'll be doing that soon. I have to figure out what they're doing. That's going to be a weird Saturday. <laughs> a weird Friday when all of NXT shows up. Again. Then there's a Goldberg promo. And now it's a Firefly Funhouse news brief! 
so that was really cool. Uh, and of course, Bray Wyatt's there. That's so funny. Uh, then Mercy the Buzzard's a weather correspondent, and it'll be a cold day in hell when Goldberg defeats the Fiend. And Goldberg sells him. Like, you've never taken on Goldberg. You're next. That was pretty fun. And this kind of took place. For the most part, in Goldberg's garage. That was just funny. Uh, then we had Daniel. And then, actually, this led to um, Daniel Bryan. We see him sitting alone in the locker room. He Slater says, man, that's tough. I know. Change you, Daniel Bryan. He's like, who the hell are you? You jobber. Well, he didn't say jobber specifically, but we all know what he wanted to say. And he's like, you know what? You're just going to face me in the ring. I'm like, whoa, dude, I have kids. So the next match was Daniel Bryan taking on Heath Slater. It, it was, for the most part, a squash match. Uh, Daniel Bryan hit the running knee onto Heath Slater. That knocked Heath Slater out. Daniel Bryan did dive into Heath Slater, diving him into the table. Again, you have the missile drop kick, the yes kicks. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Brian then eventually does the knee twice to him, and then hits on, and then sinks in the label lock. Yep, Daniel Bryan now is back to that changed heel. Again, everyone that's faced the fiend has been changed. Daniel Bryan, you're not a nice a person anymore. Oh yeah. Daniel Bryan, you're not so nice a person anymore. I don't know what your daughter and your wife's going to think about that, but if you ever face the Macho Man Randy Savage, I'll make sure I extend my hand and then slap that fiend taste on your mouth. Oh, yeah! Every so often, I do have to channel my inner Macho Man. So again, this was an okay match. It was a ham sandwich. Braun Strowman comes out, does a promo and interview. How uh, Sammy comes out, says Shinsuke Nakamura deserves an honorable rematch. Yep. And then Revolve will show up, beat up Braun. So guess probably what's going to happen at Super Showdown 2. Braun versus Shinsuke Nakamura. And then Otis is doing his game, preparing for a date workout. Like, I should start. I should have started a while ago. but uh, That's my own personal. So Otis is doing his date workout. Otis is going to be buff for his date with Mandy Rose. He better have his love muscle working too, folks. No steroids for Otis. That's bad. Very bad. Drugs are bad. Drugs are very bad. Uh, then we have... Shame is taking on Apollo Crews. It's good to see Apollo Crews, even if he is going to job for two minutes. Sheamus, she, Apollo Crews has a little offense, and then Sheamus hits one bro kick. I think this match lasts like two minutes long. It's good to see both these wrestlers. The bro kick is now the most devastating move in wrestling. This match, it was okay. It was a ham sandwich. Then we have our main event. It's a fatal four way to determine Bailey's challenger. I don't know if they're going to do this at Super Showdown, though. The, the Arabs are very odd about that. Or it just could be a setup for the Elimination Chamber, maybe. We'll see. There's Carmella taking on Naomi, taking on Alexa Bliss, taking on Dana Brooke. Oh, Dana. Dana, Dana. Dana, Dana. Dana, Dana. Dana, Dana. come on. Uh, Carmella, oh, Carmella with that cootie. Oh, you lucky bastard. You, what's your face, the nounce guy? Can't even think of his name now. So distracted by Carmella and, and, and her bootay. Uh, then she moonwalked right into Alexa Bliss, which her showboating shall always be her downfall. Alexa Bliss and started to take control of the match. And Naomi comes in. Wow, Naomi looks amazing. She has an amazing outfit. And Bailey shows up. Boo, Romulan villain Bailey. Boo. 
not even Egyptian Bailey. It's, it's Romulan villain Bailey. And I was off at this. Amazing, bro. I know that much. Then there was... By Naomi. That's just funny. Uh, poor Dana Brooke. She was doing okay. She was just there to absorb most of the punishment. Naomi did a turnbuckle bulldog. Oh, that actually looked pretty good and stiff. And Dana's the best. She just winds up for that slap. Oh! Woo! Dana Brooke, I'm a household name! The whole effing show. Yeah, watch the whole effing show. Every, I think, definitely around my birthday I want to be on it. I hope. So we'll see about that. Definitely. No, definitely. After. Monday after Triple Mania. I'm just going to go in and it's like, who cares about Raw? Let's talk about some Triple Mania, folks. Uh, then there was a twisted bliss to the knees. Oh, that had to hurt because you really can't see that coming. Carmella out of that kick. Whoa. And Naomi, did, was she the one to eat the pin or did she like, because it looks like she like deliberately put her shoulders on the ground. Ugh. Wow. What a weird ending. To actually a pretty decent match. Uh, Carmella is the new number one challenger to Bailey's belt in a cheeseburger match. For the most part, SmackDown is really a pretty decent eh, cheeseburger show. Hard to complain. The segments were short to the point. It worked. So let's take a little And I really didn't want to start the show off with this. But it'll get better though, folks. Trust me. Unfortunately, I want to say yeah, Friday night Kirk Douglas passed away. He passed away at 103. At that age, you're just like Hey, he lived the full life. He lived to be 103. Most people are very happy living at half that age of getting to, say, 52. So, again, he lived He lived the life. Uh, my condolences go out to the Douglas family. A little quick video tribute to one Kirk Douglas. There's always, whenever there's a sad note, there's always some positive notes. I can find the positive in most things, even though sometimes it's absurd. Here. Matsu! You, sir, thank you for letting me know about certain stuff and the going-ons of wrestling on the internet. You, sir, have earned... That's six count.
he goes for snare. I'm on the leg hook. Coming up. And much you saw our master air guitar, though probably with that name, air drummer. With all that being said, let's talk about some 205 Live, because I have no idea if I'm going to be able to do 205 Live next week, because well, how do I have to wake up early next like Saturday? Uh, 205 Live, start off with tag team action. One, two. One, two. One, two. Uh, Danny and Berkshire, and Oni Lorch, and Oni Lorch is back. Yes, Biff, 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 Biff. Uh, taking on Ari Dovari, and I'm the man of the plan, Bro the Brian Kendrick. And for the most part, it was pretty fun. Uh, Lorcan's vicious. Oh, he just wants to fight people. He just wants to turn any wrestling match into a brawl. Then, somehow, this fight became a wrestling match. Once Dovari and Kendrick took control, again, they turned into a wrestling match. Tony Lorcan, then Danny Birch got in. Got beat up a little bit. Uh, Oni Lorcan. Then came in and got the hot tag. And then it was a double noggin knocker, I think. And a 2x hammerlock, which is always great to see. However, oh, this is where WWE kind of lost all momentum. A chair got tossed into the ring by the Brian Kendrick. The very was supposed to use it. Uh, then Birch was in there, and he egged Oni Lorcan onto using the chair. Oni Lorcan hit Ari Davari with a chair? That's a DQ, baby! You can't use no foreign object in my ring! But, and then, the weird thing is, the Danny Birch was upset, because he used the chair. That's because Danny Birch wanted to use the table! Oh, no chairs, just tables. And I don't think they managed to put anyone through it. The heels escaped. I'll tell you what, that was a horrible ending. Bring back Birch and Lorcan. That was a can of soup. And just when I thought it wasn't going to get worse, we had the Bollywood boys. Molly, 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 Molly. Taking on Joe Furk. And the Von Dixies. I apologize if I said the jobbers' names wrong. The jobbers! Here we go. Actually, the jobbers did really good for the most part. Uh, even though the other guy never got in, D Von Dixie was awesome. He did a double axe handle drop. I always appreciate a double axe, double axe handle. Uh, he did a neck breaker, but then the Bollywoods just went all Bollywood and did the Bollywood Edible, whatever they call it. Uh, and then, I'll tell you what, I was shocked that the Joppers got as much work in as they did. The one guy didn't get tagged in at all. Hmm. Very suspicious. 
without him getting tagged in, who knows? He could have made a difference. Maybe he could have beat the pin. Since this match was another can of soup. Then the main event, this was really short. This was weird about 205. It was Tony Nice taking on Leo Rush, taking on Jordan Devlin. Jordan Devlin, known as being the poor man's Finn Balor. Uh, it was pretty good. Again, very indicative. The only problem is that it's very indicative of a triple threat match where there's always one person. Uh, nice, I think, goes out first. So. Rush and Devlin beat each other up, and then once Rush gets thrown out, Nice gets in, beats up Devlin. Yeah, it's it's very very predictable like that. Then Nice and Devlin turn into a shouting match, and Devlin, because he is the devil inside, hit a double suplex, double superplex. I'm sorry, because he eventually teamed up because they don't neither of them like Leo Rush. And then it was a double noggin knocker followed by a double splash by Leo Rush because they tried to do that again. So, nope, you knock both heads together, splash on both of them. And it was a comeuppance for, for Nice and Devlin's because, again, they tried to be very heelish. And then, for the most part, then he did some, something flop and, and one flop to the floor. I, f I forget what the moon calls. And I am the Hurricane Runner, baby. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. But this time, I am the turnbuckle. Cuckoo, kachoo. And what's up with Aiden English? He's just like, was acting weird. I don't know. He's, he's always weird every so often. His commentary. It is interesting. Uh, nice did hit a sunset driver, which is pretty cool. And Nice got to use the knees. However, Devlin hit the devil inside. Jordan Devlin retains his cruiserweight championship, brings that across the pond. It was okay. It was very indicative of kind of most triple threat matches. It was good, though. It was a good action. A cheeseburger match. However, this 205 Live is only a ham sandwich. And that was all the Friday Night Wrestling. Um, next week's schedule sucks. I'm going to probably do my Monday show. That's it. I might get in Wednesday just some NW. A, I think. So I'll do probably one long show, one short show. SmackDown. I hope to finish probably Monday. I'll probably watch it Friday. Maybe. Actually, I don't even think I can do that. Yeah, because I have to get the racetrack then. I don't know. We'll see about Friday. I might do that. And then sometime, either the 13th or 14th, it's probably Tuesday night, I'll have my, this one goes out to you, all the ladies, Valentine's Day special. So quick way on how to make a decent Valentine's dinner of bison burgers. That's always good. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I have to go start cooking. Uh, have a good night. Enjoy the weekend and be safe. And don't drive like race car drivers. That's very bad. Bye.